Ladies and gentlemen on the Shred Gaming Tentacom video, we have some more news concerning AMD's high bandwidth memory graphics cards. So as I'm sure many of you are aware, Fury has indeed made it into the wild. But let's face it, AMD are not just going to be sitting on their laurels. There's a couple of reasons behind this, but the primary one is it just doesn't make sense. Sure, we've got the 300 range, but... Effectively, aside from a few subtle changes such as improved clock speeds, they are basically rebrands. And so eventually AMD, and by eventually, and really AMD mean as soon as possible, will want to release a follow-up to um, these type of GPUs. And of course, a Fiji and Fury lineup. So AMD are already working on this. They're working on an entire range of high bandwidth GPUs to follow in this footsteps. Now, there is a couple of problems right now. Um, primarily, the, these things do actually take quite a long time to develop, as one can imagine. And so we're realistically not going to be seeing uh, a successor to GCN 1.2, which is basically Fiji slash Tonga, until 2016. There's not been a firm date, so let's just say mid next year. Now, from what we understand, this is going to be known as a rather cool, if you will, sounding name of Arctic Islands. AMD do love their islands, and the Enthusiast GPU and others are high-end is supposedly going to be known as Greenland. Now, this is supposedly going to be on either a 14 or 16nm manufacturing process rather than 28nm, which is currently what both NVIDIA and... Okay, I'm back. I actually had to stop recording because I just found out I have a wasp nest at my side of my house, so I've got to get pest control down. I'm not even kidding. Back into the video. You see? You see how I, I, I deal with these crises and continue for you guys? Yes, I know. Anyway, and no, I won't be poking in the wasp nest before anyone comments. And it's ridiculously hot as well, so I'm not very amused. One is not amused, but I shall maintain my British stiff upper lip or something. So anyway, getting back into the video. Because I'm sure probably there's some of your interest by now. Now, from what we understand... AMD have priority access to high bandwidth memory 2. Now, HBM2, of course, is pretty much double the specifications of HBM1, which has been the standard in memory for some time. HB, uh, DDR1, to DDR2, to DDR3, you get the idea. So, sources are stating that AMD have managed to throw a lot of weight behind this new range of GPUs. And to take advantage of a deal with SK Hynix, this will give AMD the priority to HBM2 capability. Now, you might say, well, what does that actually mean in the real world? Like, does that mean that they get priority of shipments? And even if so, does it really mean a shit? I mean, seriously, does it ca does it matter? Supposedly, yes, because HBM1 is still fairly difficult to produce, but HTM2, a HBM2, is going to be actually really difficult to produce. This means that NVIDIA, who are, who are, of course, going to be releasing their Pascal architecture next year, could be in for a little bit of a problem. Because if, let's say, they're both released, and I'm obviously pulling a date out of my ass here, this is not anywhere near confirmed, I'm just pulling a date out of my thumb. Let's say they're both aimed for an April 15th launch or an April slash May launch. NVIDIA could have a bit of a problem on its hands. So what does that mean for NVIDIA? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's unknown. Because what it's possible is that, you know, HBM1 really for the moment is probably okay. And from what I'm seeing, there's still potential for HBM1 to be slightly increased in clock speed from what it is now. With improvements to, let's say, the Kepler architecture, in other words, they in once again improve the memory bandwidth efficiency, Maxwell has been dealing with a lower memory bus width than um, you might imagine. So it's possible HBM1 could be enough for an intermediary chip, rather than Pascal. Now, from what we've already seen, Pascal has been taped out. In other words, AMD, NVIDIA know roughly what they want. So, it's not a case of like, okay, they don't know how many shaders or whatever. Obviously, there's probably some intermediary stuff they're trying to figure out. But they probably roughly know what the specifications of the GPUs are going to be. They're waiting, however, for HBM2. So, it could be that... They're going to be waiting now. Why the hell have AMD got this? Well, 
because AMD had a seven year involvement with high bandwidth memory. Um, and this is what we know. I mean, Robert Halleck from AMD told me this even in an interview. But it wasn't clear about, obviously, any exclusivity. But it kind of makes sense, right? Because not only did they put some of their weight behind HBM, and AMD are a major player in memory, by the way. It's just everyone knows them for motherboard, uh, sorry, for processors and graphics cards. But they are a major player in memory. They help to create certain standards and specifications. So with that, plus creating and, well, helping manufacture the, the world's first easy to use, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Interposer, that's the word, which is of course the connection between the HBM and the memory. It's kind of like, yeah, we've pioneered this stuff and we're going to claim a stake to it, which, to be honest, I can't blame them because it's like, from a moral standpoint, why would you just work all that time to help your competitors to get launched at exactly the same time? It just doesn't make any sense. So, what does that mean? Well, HBM2, for the sake of argument, is probably going to be a little difficult for NVIDIA to get initially. Now, what initially means, I don't know. I don't have access to facts and figures. I'm just saying what currently is being reported. What it could be, it could be a three month thing, it could be a six month thing, it could be until they get memory, um, the techniques down a little bit more, whatever. HPM2, however, will be crucial for 4K or above. And as we all know, PC gamers don't like to play at 30 FPS. Really, do we? I mean, come on, 30 FPS, really, for PC? <laughs> no, not even slightly. 10, basically, 1080p, 30 FPS is pathetic for most PC gamers. It, let's just be honest. Let's just talk, you know, honestly here. Um, I I just recently reviewed the GTX 960, and it's a monster. It really, really is a monster. It has a ridiculous amount of performance at 1080p, and that's with MSAA enabled, that's you being able to turn on like, I mean, you can play bloody uh, GTA 5, 1080p, uh, yeah, 1080p, GTA 5, pretty much all the settings at max, and the game runs absolutely beautifully, it looks much better than a console, those are just facts. But for 4K, it's a little different. For 60 FPS in 4K, we're going to need a lot of bandwidth and a lot of shader power. So that's really where HPM2 comes into play. So it will be interesting how NVIDIA can respond to this. I, I, I don't think it's going to be a shock to them. I think that we might see a Pascal intermediary. I wouldn't be surprised. It could be based on Maxwell just with an increased number of shaders, maybe using HBM1 for the sake of argument. I can see that. I could see a potential Maxwell rebrand saying, hey, you know what, we can't use Pascal, but what we are going to be doing is maybe a really wide bus on GDDR5, which is potential. I mean, look at the bus width of, um, let's say, even the GTX 980s high. So they could go ahead, make it wider, maybe even 512, or they could just go that down the HBM1 route, but increase the clock speeds a little bit from 500 megahertz effective to, let's say, 550, with a nice wide bus, 4096 bit, and you've got a lot of bandwidth there. You could easily hit 640, maybe slightly more if you get really premium quality memory. It depends, obviously, on, once again, bus width. But you could potentially make a good GPU out of that, which is going to be more than sufficient, particularly once again if you take into account colour compression and all of the other bits and pieces, if they could even refine that a little bit more, obviously I'm not saying that they're going to be able to do that overnight and just be like, lols, oh look, you forgot to carry a 2 and therefore the uh, algorithm is twice as effective, but you know, even a few percent, even say 5% more effective plus HBM2, oh, sorry, HBM1 refined, this puts potential. Then again, they might also think to themselves, you know what, we don't mind AMD having a bit of a free reign for a while, that's fine, it gives us more time to work in Pascal. Or maybe they could do an intermediary, cheaper, cut-down, die-shrunk version of Maxwell, that could also work. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Bit of food for thought. But for now, take care, and uh, have a good day. And wish me luck with the wasps. I don't want to get stung. <laughs>